Hi, Dr. Ashila. Okay, so our group going to present to you about physiology of digestive system and in respiratory system. So, my name is Irshaduddin Ilmam bin Muhammad Zaini as my group leader. Going to be your first presenter. So, what we're going to cover in this slide. First, we're going to state the general function of digestive system. Second, the general function of respiratory system. And then, how digestive system and respiratory system work in our body. And what the effect of these two systems to the other system in our body. And the most important part, what's the connection between these two systems and how they work together in our body. And last but not least, what we have is the risk of heavy lung disease and digestive system condition. So, let's check it out. So, as I mentioned before, general function of respiratory system is to provide oxygen and to eliminate carbon dioxide. Our respiratory system is the network of organ and tissue that help us to keep breathing. This system help our body to absorb oxygen from the air so our organ can keep work. It also clean waste gas such as carbon dioxide from our blood to prevent common problems such as allergies, disease or infection. Meanwhile, the general function of the digestive system is to absorb organic substrate, vitamins, ion, and water required by all living cells. Hello Dr. Sheila, I'm Noor Shifa Akila Binti Zakaria and I will explain briefly on how digestive system works. So firstly, at mouth, ingestion of food where food is chewed and mixed with saliva that contains the enzymes for chemical breakdowns of carbohydrates by amylase and lipids via lingual lipids. And then the food will move down to pharynx. Pharynx will prepare food from the other cavity to the esophagus via swallowing and peristalsis. At esophagus, the contraction and relaxation of elementary walls move muscle help to further propel food into stomach. And at stomach, begins chemical breakdown of proteins and the mechanical mechanical churning of food with gastric juices to form chem. Also, the stomach will secrete hydrochloric acid for enzymes and killing harmful microbes in food. And at the same time, Accessory organs, the liver will be produced by salts to emulsify lipids, adding their digestion and absorption. The gallbladder will store and release by into duodenum to add in digestion of chem. While pancreas will produce digestive enzymes, which are pancreatic amylase, proteins, and lipids, and also bicarbonate to neutralize acidic chemes that the stomach churns out. The absorption mainly occurs in small intestine. Segmentation will mix food with digestive juices and facilitates absorption of breakdown products of carbohydrates, protein, lipids and nucleic acids along with vitamins, minerals and water. And lastly, at large intestine, it will absorb most residual water, electrolytes and vitamins produced by enteric bacteria. Food residue is concentrated and temporarily stored prior to defecation and soon it will remove from the body as feces through rectum. There is also oxidation process in digestion of food. The digestion of food is also considered an oxidation process, which food molecules react with oxygen from respiration to form carbon dioxide and water, also resulting in the release of energy. For example, in the mitochondria, the fatty acids are oxidized in the process that creates ATP, the energy producing fuel for the use of cell bodies. Besides, excess intake of proteins in the form of amino acids are metabolized and oxidized to produce energy or converted to glucose or fat. Also, the production of ATP for cellular respiration is achieved through the oxidation of monosaccharide glucose molecules. Food digestion is also controlled by a few hormones such as gastrin, secretin and cholecystokinin. So the function of gastrin is to stimulate the secretion of gastric acid by the parietal cells of the stomach mucosa while the secreting is to stimulate a watery secretion of bicarbonate by the pancreas 
And cholecystokinin also causes CCK is to stimulate the secretion of pancreatic enzymes and bind from the liver and release of bind from the gallbladder. So this is how these hormones act on digestive organ system. How the respiratory system work? A that contain a mix of oxygen and other gases is inhaled through mouth or nose before moving down the pharynx, larynx, and the trachea. The tracheal virgilia will filter the A and trap inhaled pharyngeal particle. A pass through the trachea into primary, secondary, and tertiary bronchi in the lung. Then move into even smaller tube called bronchiolites. At the end of the bronchiolites are alveoli, and this is where gas exchange occurs. Oxygen is moved into bloodstream. Blood will carry the oxygen through the body. Then the blood collect the carbon dioxide from the body cell and transport it back to the lung, where it is removed from the body when you exhale. The cycle begins again with the next breath. When you inhale, the rib will move upward and outward while diaphragm contract. When you exhale, the rib will move downward and inward while diaphragm relaxes. D is the component that involves in the human respiratory system. So, this is the most important part in our slide. What is the connection between the respiratory and digestive system? How these two systems work together in our body? Effects of digestive system on respiratory system At first, to provide substrates, vitamins, water, and ions that are necessary to all cells of respiratory system. Secondly, pressure of digestive organs against the diaphragm can assist in exhalation and limit inhalation. What I mean in this sentence is your respiratory tract wouldn't be able to function without the product of digestion while the process of exhalation is passive and doesn't require muscular contraction the process of inhalation requires you to contract the respiratory muscle including the diaphragm and intercostal muscle to inhale muscle need fuel where we got the fuel from the digestive system in order to contract So, what effects of respiratory system on digestive system? First, increased thoracic and abdominal pressure through contraction of respiratory muscle can assist in defecation. Second, cellular respiration oxidizes monosaccharide glucose molecule from carbohydrate digestion through glycosis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphor phosphorylation to produce ATP. Respiratory and digestive system work together to provide energy to body cells. Respiratory system will deliver oxygen to the body. So, muscular contract to break down food and move through the digestive tract. Smooth muscle in the stomach turn food into liquid and move food through the system by contraction of the intestine. It means no oxygen, digestive tract will stop to working. Digestive system needs to function properly to provide the food it needs to work effectively. So, respiratory system also will function properly. Digestive system and respiratory system are depend to each other to function properly. So, the next one is how does the respiratory system relate to other systems in human body? The first is digestive system and respiratory system. As we know, digestive system has a basic but important function. Digestive system breaks down the food into simpler substance that the body can use include the proteins. This helps the respiratory system because the lungs need nutrients. 
and the respiratory system help the digestive system by giving oxygen to the digestive system. The next is skeletal system and respiratory system. Skeletal system is very important to our body because this system has a metal shield cover our body that protecting the inner body. This system help the respiratory system by protecting our lungs. The third one is respiratory system related to the muscular system. The muscular system is very interesting. As we know in human body, there are three types of muscle tissue, which is skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. This muscular system help to push air come into and leave the respiratory system through the contractions and relations of the diaphragma, which is a muscle. The respiratory system has the lungs that deliver air to the muscle. Next is respiratory system related to the circulatory system in human body. The circulatory system is very useful. This system transport the food, nutrients and oxygen to our body cell. It also delivers of carbon dioxide and waste product. This helps the respiratory system by transporting nutrients to keep the lungs clean and healthy. In return, the respiratory system allows air to keep the circulatory system going. The last one is respiratory system related to the nervous system in our body. The nervous system is very awesome. The system actually makes we feel what uh, we feel. It controls our body's activities. Plus, it helps the respiratory system by allow, allow us to feel and know when we are breathing and have something that control of it. The nervous system also triggers us to win, to win or scream when we are get physically hurt. Next is what system are related to the digestive system. What circulatory system is carry blood through the digestive system. The second one is nervous system. Its influence activity in the digestive system whether slower or faster the metabolism. The third one is muscular system. How to swallow the food include tongue and throat. The next system is skeletal system. It helps to chew the food so it is digestible. The last system is integumentary system. It's to help digestive system to absorb the calcium. I will explain the risk of having lung disease like COPD and digestive system condition like GERD. COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the long Term, lung condition that makes it hard to breathe. People with COPD may get stomach problem. The symptom is coughing up a lot of mucus, shortness of breath, tightness in the chest. GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease is the digestive disorder that affects the lower esophageal sphincter. The valve that allow food to pass into the stomach and close to breathing food and stomach acid from flowing back into the esophagus. The symptom is dry cough, chest pain, and vomit of stomach content. The connection between COPD and GERD is it frequently occur together. When acid moving out from stomach into the esophagus, it triggered a nerve reflex that caused a way to constrict to keep acid out and prevent it to get into the lung. If the acid enters the lung, it can result in irritation, increased coughing, and extreme shortness of breath. Other connection is side effect of medication. Some of medication used to treat COPD may decrease the infectiveness of the lower esophageal sphincter. Control GERD symptom will help control COPD symptom. To control it, they should avoid certain triggers like spicy food and alcohol. 
keep head of bed elevated, stop smoking. And most important is to see the doctor to ensure best treatment and to maintain better control with overboard condition. So, as a conclusion, the digestive system and respiratory system are both counting on each other to ensure the normal chemical and physical functions in a living system. The digestive system breaks down food into simpler substances which helps the respiratory system because the lungs need nutrients while the respiratory system helps the digestive system by giving oxygen to the digestive system. So, that's all from us. Thank you.